All right, welcome to the Wicked Piss of Podcast. I'm Chris Boyd, the show host. Thanks for being with us. I'm joined today by Mike Burns of Burns Consulting, and we're talking about um, marketing. It's uh, as we're running into the end of the year. I don't know about you, Mike, but I'm sure thinking about next year to try to get off to a good start. And so I thought this would be certainly a topic that you know, we've, we've touched on this, uh, you know, the same kind of thing last year, talk about business planning and, and so forth. But I, I thought, let's talk specifically about marketing, because I think marketing in the age of COVID is challenging and it causes people to sort of reassess how should they be thinking about things. So let me just start off, um, Mike, uh, people in this, uh, listeners of the show, our, our podcast have uh, been introduced to you before. But if they hadn't heard your previous uh, segments with us, let's introduce you again. Uh, tell okay. us a little about yourself and, and your practice. Sure. I uh, started the business in 2008. Uh, Burns Consulting really helps advisors grow. Uh, we're part of the FPA Coaches Corner. Of, of all those disciplines, you know, they have you know cybersecurity and compliance and all that. We have uh, business growth strategies. So we're really excited because that's our sweet spot. And, uh, you know, been, you know, a good friend of the FPAs for a long time, whether it's our local chapter or on a national level and, and speak um, throughout the country. So this year, I think we did six webinars with the FPA um, and hopefully we'll do even more next year. Maybe back to those in-person events too. Hopefully that that's the case. Yeah, with any luck, right? Yeah, yeah as uh, we have this hope of vaccines starting to uh, talk about being disseminated and so forth. So, um, although, you know, I, that's really the question, too, as it relates to how quickly will this give us the opportunity for life to resume? And I think that does uh, complicate our marketing thinking as well when we when we address this, because um, it's very possible that we'll be, uh, you know, in between for a while, you know, where we'll still be in this sort of COVID mode with virtual meetings and and the like. Uh, before we get to that, but maybe by the end of the year, or halfway through the year, we might, you know, be able to revisit in-person meetings or events, uh, seminars, I don't know what. Um, so where should we begin in talking about uh, planning? Should we look back or look ahead or, you know, are there lessons we should drive from uh, 2020 as we look toward planning for 2021? Yeah, well, I, you know, I'll, I'll say like even my business got impacted because I don't have the in-person speaking engagements, but my consulting business blew up because all the things I was already talking about as best practices now are must-haves. Like you, you have to be in the virtual world. And and so it's been a nice, uh, you know, the pandemic's not good in any way. I'm sorry for anyone that's been impacted, you know, directly sure. or indirectly, but 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 on kind of the benefits for me is that the, there's a lot of advisors or financial planners that realize that they needed help. You know, one little simple thing I would say is, you know, if you don't have a great digital presence, your website's not an A plus has to be, it, you know, really should be, um, has to be, should be, I guess you could debate that. Uh, the, if you don't have virtual event strategies, um, webinars and other things, um, online discussions like this, if you're not, pushing out all kinds of great video content and, and uh, text and graphics and infographics. And um, if you don't have just this wonderful content strategy um, and if you're not ramping it up, you know, being uh, probably twice to four or eight times as active as you were last year, um, you're missing the boat. And, and it's, you know, unfortunately this isn't going to stop just like that. I know, you know, we talked about maybe the vaccine will come through and, you know, people will start to come out of the woodwork, but I don't think everyone's going to come back to this real world. Like, I think some of this stuff is the new normal. Um, so you shouldn't be looking in the rearview mirror of saying, hey, that worked and I'm going to go right back to that. It's going to be a mix. You know, some people are, are going to prefer uh, um, conversations like this over, uh, uh, you know, I think introverted people especially, but but there will definitely be some people that um, uh, aren't going to be part of that old world. So how are you going to pivot and be more successful in that world? Let me ask you a little bit about some of that for a minute. Um, so one, you said two to eight times the uh, level of activity. Um, and by that, you're talking about video posting and social media engagement, I think, um, relative to what you might have been doing before. That sounds like a lot. Is there a point at which you can do too much? 
Yes, and, and for some people, it was two to eight times zero. <laughs> so yeah, right, right, right. Thing, they have to be in this world, <laughs> whether they like it or not. But for others, yeah. yes. You know, the best thing about digital marketing is, I always say this, it's, it's very trackable. So there's a lot of a great analytical tools. So if you're using a tool like Constant Contact for your email, you know what your open rates are and what your click-through rates are. So you can measure if you're going overboard and, and not getting in front of them. Um, you know, some of the things, uh, you know, vi video strategies, for example, there's a lot of wonderful content out there that financial advisors go, yeah, we need to push that out there, but they don't know if there's an audience. Like they don't test and do that extra work uh, up front. Um, I get we're a client referrals driven industry and event marketing was wonderful, right? But um, you can't actually get introduced in person like you used to be able to. So your videos now can play that role, you know, you and they always could before, but um, uh, let's take a quick step back. I used to say there's three easy ways to get client referrals or three types of ways. One is to wow them and they just happen. Two is to create opportunities to get introduced. And third is to create content that would be shared. And that's where a lot of financial planners would suffer because they create some content, um, but they don't necessarily know that there's a built-in audience to have it shared. Um, so if you want, I can, I can talk about kind of a how, what to do before you create a video. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead with that. All right. So one of the things we see is, again, the, the advisor will come up with a head and they can run with it. And then, you know, they put a lot of time into the production sharing and then they get you know, relatively zero views and they didn't it wasn't viral at all. Yeah. Yeah. My definition of viral is, you know, you get it in front of five good prospects. It doesn't have to be you have a billion views, but but right. as long as you're potentially getting leads. Um, and so what I recommend for them to do is go sit across from their target market. So one of their clients that really fits who they want to bring in as new clients and say, hey, you know, is this helpful that I did X, Y, and Z for you? Um, I was thinking about, you know, creating a video for people like you. Do, you. do you know anyone that would could benefit from that? Yes, yes, yes. Well, if I create that video, any advice of some things I should put in there? Obviously, keep it confidential. Don't give away anything specific about your client. So now they've actually kind of contributed some ideas to the video. They're engaged a little bit, maybe yeah, uh, create, invested in the process and the success. Yeah, like they feel like it's their video and you and they feel like they're create, you know, you're creating it for those people that they mentioned. Like, oh yeah, I have some people that are um, you know, widows, for example, like going through something really bad, they're about to lose a significant other, or they did, like, oh, you know what, I'll create a video for them so you can share it with them. Yeah. And bam, um, you have a built-in distribution channel for your video before you ever create it. And that's how you do well in the viral marketing world is, is don't just put it up there and hope that it gets that traction, which you still could, but but it's nice to have that sharing mechanism. So it's it's going to get the eyeballs that you need on it. Um, one of the things that um, you know makes me wonder about, the, the, so this new... Uh, reality. Uh, th so when we would do seminars in the past, we had a pretty clear sense of what our conversion rate would be, or however you want to refer to that. But, you know, how much business we'd end up actually getting out of that experience, that event, how many people in those seats would lead to what level of transactions, if you, if right. you will. Um, I do, you know, how do you, I think conversion becomes more of a challenge when it comes to, okay, we can put out content. Um, we can, you know, put all this stuff out there, but to your point, how do we know one that like, how do we make sure that it's being seen and distributed, disseminated and in, in a way that's in front of enough people. And then all those metrics are probably very different for how many eyeballs need to see it before we lead to some kind of a resulting action. Um, and whether or not, you know, I don't know, like um, what the metrics of how many people I need to see before it leads to an actual business opportunity. You know what I mean? Can you just speak to that notion a little bit? Sure. How, are we, how do you, how do you, you got to revision, envision some of these things and how much well, to put out and how, how do we make sure that um, it's being seen sufficiently? Do I got to pay for boosts and stuff like that or? Um, and then is it, is it a totally different metric for how much, um, how many occasions, uh, in, in levels of interest it takes before I turn that into a, an actual, uh, client experience? Right. Wonderful. So I, I will say conversion is a little harder online. If you're sitting, I think most 
planners would say if you're sitting across from somebody, you know, across your desk or a boardroom table, you're more likely to close them if, if you're doing it over the phone. And then virtual is a little bit better if you're doing it via this, this type of discussion because they yeah. can you. So you should factor that in. Um, I agree with that. But let's say you had a five grand event marketing budget that you didn't have to use at all or you couldn't use. Um, so now you're doing webinars, which are virtually free, you know, pay for the software and you have to do the uploading. So there's some, some staffing work that has to be done, but there's, there's extra money to be spent. Um, there are, if you're very targeted with digital advertising and you can drive leads in, you can track to make sure you're getting the right leads. And so you um, creating the content or the webinar for that right audience and then backtracking what that value would be. You know, one thing I do tell my clients is, you know, sometimes they do the math and the ROI based on whether they bring that client in and what the revenue would be for one year. But most planners keep those clients for life. Um, and so what's the lifelong value of a client? Um, and so you can actually tweak the ROI model a little bit more to spend a little bit more if you think you're going to have a client for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can get into more specifics, but I hope that's kind of getting you a, a sense of how this all should work. Um, and you know the lead funnel. The so you're, you're, I am hearing you say that you do need to spend money in terms of this um, to get penetration. You know, it's one thing. I mean, I don't know about you, Mike, but you probably have a ton of followers. But on our our social media, you know, we've got a couple hundred on this channel, a couple hundred on that, you know, channel, and there probably is overlap in those. And you know, um, it's largely people we know, you know, already. So it's not a real distribution channel if you will. And nor is it sufficiently a community uh, that is kind of fostering development and creation of more of its own, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, so uh, we're kind of limited in terms of that reach. So I, I'm of the mind that we probably need to, that, you know, when we have good content, put some, some money behind it to get it more widely seen to draw those people in that we don't already have contact with. Yeah, you know, one of the common faults that I see with um, advisors is they do brand awareness type of digital advertising and yeah. that can't compete with a, a, like a big wirehouse name, for example. So they're never that successful. Um, if you're gonna do any type of digital marketing, I, I really recommend direct response advertising. So you're not just trying to be known, you're actually trying to get them to take some action, whether it's you know, get your first, your freemium on your website, which is some giveaway that you can catch their contact information, whether they're registering for your webinar, you can get that, or you're, whether you're sending them out a video series or whatever it might be. Um, then Have you, that call to action, whether yeah. it's the, you know, I, uh, I, I was on uh, Words with Friends a couple of nights ago, and I got three different Fisher advertisements uh, <laughs> for myself on that. And I was like, Oh, there's a lesson here. These guys are good, right? You know, in terms of their marketing, they're, they've got the, uh, I see them on Instagram. I see them on things like this. And so um, it makes you think a little bit about how do you, how do you plan for what's, and every one of them was a call to action. Get your seven secrets of whatever, or mistakes of whatever. And, you know, you get my point. Yeah. Um, and it was a call to action. I think um, that, that um, it's, it's time consuming to create those um, piece of literature, whatever it is, you know, the, the, the get, get, get your free, whatever it happens to be item. Uh, but that, that seems like it can be leveraged so well when it comes to social media to put that time in, in front. Do you want to touch on that? Is that something that's a, an essential part of the process? And that kind of takes time with graphics and uh, you know, to be, professionally uh, done with the right look or whatever? I will tell you that the, the advisors that are creating websites that just have a contact us form, and that's the only way they can capture a lead, their websites are suffering. Like they're not really true lead funnels because a lot of prospects can come to your website and see a lot of stuff they like, but they're not gonna take that next step because th they have to proactively go fill out the contact us page. But if you have some teaser on there that they have to have, like, oh my goodness, that is talking exactly what it, like to me as a target market yeah, um, yeah, and it's teasing me. Like, you know, you make it sensational. Like, you know, some of the Fisher stuff you can learn from, like, you know, mistakes to, to avoid. Right. 
which creates some urgency. Like, you know, I'm about to retire and, and this is a, a five things to, to mistakes to avoid when you retire. I better right. get that. Um, That's exactly the kind of stuff it was. And um, yeah, so, okay. I, that, but that takes time to create that stuff um, in advance. How much time are you uh, saving from not traveling? You know, how much dollars are you saving from not traveling? And, and there's, there's time, you know, I think, Yes. Well, I think it also forces you to define your, your target market a little bit yeah. too, because you're really identifying those uh, challenges that your market, you know, your target really faces. And, and that can really set you up beneficially as well, right? Right. And, and you, you've heard me talk about target markets, and how important they are in segmenting yeah. your strategy. But you can have some generic things like the, the Fisher thing might, I, mean, I don't know if it was Fisher, but, you know, five things you have to avoid uh, mistakes you have to avoid before you retire that kind of thing yeah exactly it talks to a lot like pre-retirees or retirees you, that's those are gigantic groups but but those freemiums or giveaways on your website that tease people to trade their contact information should be really targeted and and uh, you know most people think oh if i'm going to do one i'll just put it on my home page and then maybe it'll be on the sidebar of every sub page or drill down page but that's so, where um yeah. that's where you know, marketing can be that much more advanced. You can create something that can go on a drill down page that's specific to that page. So if it's speaking to widows or corporate executives, have it be the, the giveaway specific to them. Well, and should that PDF or whatever, um, own, like, should there be a, a gate to, you know, like uh, you have to provide your contact information in order to, uh, you know, you can see that it's right behind that screen. I just need to get my <laughs> my yeah. uh, email address or whatever it might be. Um, isn't that really important at this stage of, if, for that kind of engagement so that you can continue to to drip and and then you know maybe it's uh, now after the five secrets for successful retirement, you know maybe it's the seven secrets of mistakes to avoid, and you know you then try to pull them back in if they didn't come through uh, with an appointment and uh, maybe a drip campaign that follows these. It, it, am I right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I'll answer one of your previous questions. Does it take a lot of time to create all this? Like, yeah, if you'd create an ebook or something like that, or a real book, it, it, it's deeper resources, but sometimes it's a two page, like two sided flyer, right? Like two, two pages. And it's uh, a quick, article that just speaks to me and whatever target market I am. And that's just enough to trade their contact information and tease them to want to learn more. That's the secret. You know, we're in this world where we need, none of us want another email. We can't keep up with our emails. Right. So what, what would be so enticing? They'd be like, you know, it's, it's risky. I'm going to get more emails, but I'm going to, it's worth it. I'm going to trade my information. Um, I want to go back to uh, you know, two to eight times the content and we're talking largely video content. All right, so we're having a discussion, record a Zoom call, a discussion with, uh, you know, advisors or, um, you know, yourself or whatever it might be. Um, all right, so the content's relatively easy to create, but in terms of the, the technology now, uh, I got my phone, I've got the program, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. Yeah. But um, how, how do we think about the content? Do we do a series? Do we think about uh, just one off, say what's on my mind today? Uh, how compelling does this have to be or should it be? Like how uh, grand in, in its thoughtful scope and uh, design, or is it something where we're trying to build rapport and relationship and it's partly just about getting the, the other side of the screen to get to know you and feel comfortable that they're gonna reach out to you? Yeah, so so a whole bunch of stuff in there, and uh, you know, years of advice to try to cram into like a quick couple quick answers. No, I'm like throwing too much at you. <laughs> the, well, <laughs> you know, from a topic standpoint, I just figure these are the kind of things I think about. I imagine other people are thinking the same thing. Like how how much you know? How do I structure this? You know that kind. Of yeah, thing. from a, I'm a big fan of, of client research, and so now is a perfect time to do it at the end of the year, or at least try to do it once or every other year. And one of the questions can be, you know, what keeps you up at night or what are your major worries or what are, what concerns or what kind of content would you want me to create? So you can get, you know, depending on your client base, you can get enough content to, to create for the whole year. Um, but that's just the first step. Um, then the, the second part of it is now starting to create a strategy to, to get it out. Um, and we have limited resources, all of us, time and hours. So what's going to have the most bang for the buck? The good news is 
there's a couple bad trends um, and you have to figure them out and be, to be successful. But one of the bad trends is we're this ADD society. We get pulled in a whole bunch of different directions. True. The upside is that is our content can be short. We just need to know how to jam it. You know, if you're going to create a video, my advice is, okay, whatever you were going to try to do, try to cut it in half and try to front load it. So you win them over um, some video uh, tech techniques is have a hook. So some teaser of uh, content at the end of the video that they should stick there, stick around for. Uh, one of them been earlier on and that it's coming kind of thing. Yeah, and even one simple one's a listicle, which is like, uh, I'm going to give you five pieces of advice on this topic. And so they want to stick oh, okay. for all five. Um, but like, yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you my best piece of advice at the end of this video. So please make sure you stick, stick around for it. That, that little technique keeps people uh, um, from the, the term is aborting out of the video where they, and, and people do, we just, you know, if you think of all the content that's on online and we're a short attention span society, like we have a thousand things or a million things or actually probably there's over a billion websites. They're not all active, but there's all kinds of distractions out there. So you really have to be really good at your content. Um, How long is, is appropriate then? Well, so uh, before I answer that, your other question was like, should you be kind of, uh, you know, really strong in the content? I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Or should you kind of yeah. be relationship based? I'm a big fan of infotainment. I might have said this before, but it's a combination of entertainment and and um, and information and then combine the two and, and then, you know, make it kind of fun and exciting to go through this stuff. Don't just be kind of like a boring professor teaching all the time. You can you can make your, your true side come across. Um, what was your, your question? How long should it be? Yeah, uh, I get that question all the time. I, I usually put the question back on my clients, like who's the audience? But you know, the, the simple answer is your clients probably have a, a longer attention span because they have a relationship with them already. Um, prospects much shorter, so get to the point as quick as you can. Um, but it really depends on your audience and what you're trying to get across. For if you're creating kind of a simple video strategy, you're probably shooting for 90 seconds to five minutes and, and to get things out. Um, I think yeah. I probably told you before on, on some of your, your radio, your great radio show before is, is in YouTube, there's a tool that allows you to create a playlist. And so you can have a video play and it can be short. And then the, it's just like those kind of, I used to joke, like the love mixes you'd make on the cassettes back in the day. It had a theme, right? So <laughs> yeah, the playlist does that. It, it plays. So someone that has a longer attention span, the next video will play and play and play and play. So you share the playlist link, not the individual YouTube link. Um, That's good. That keeps, That's them really good. keeps them in there. Yeah. You know, let me backtrack a minute. Cause I, I feel like I've been peppering you with all kinds of questions, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I wonder if we should step back and say, you know, you mentioned that your business is largely about, um, you know, growth, but, you know, helping people grow their business um, and, and that notion and so what one let's tell us a little bit about your business and you know how you help advisors um is it um individual advisors is it uh you know large companies like everything in between um and then you know do you how do you approach the whole thing is it specific projects i want to get better at this or is it hey let's figure out a comprehensive plan as you're thinking about your marketing plan for 2021 let's dig in and figure out what that should look like. Um, you know, that kind of mindset, uh, narrow to specific, any, anything in between. Tell, tell yeah. us a little bit. So we, we work with all different sizes, you know, the smaller mom and pop type of firm needs a lot of help, but also the, you know, the firm with a billion plus and AUM has all more complicated issues and they actually have levels of, of staff and advisors and they're all at different levels too. So even the more sophisticated, bigger firms have a lot of issues. Um, so, as long as they can pay a retainer really is, yeah, is the right. factor. Um, and we, we discharge based on how much we can help folks. You know, our, our typical engagement does have growth involved, but there's an amazing amount of stuff we learn as we peel back the onion, like partners sometimes can't stand each other. So we got to help them communicate better. Um, sometimes they're inappropriate staffed. Sometimes they're doing, we're not compliance experts, but we identify all kinds of compliance issues that they have and get them a resource to help them. Uh, and so we, our engagements can go, we bat, that's why we do a retainer because we used to start with a project and there was so much um, our, our consulting lingo is, is scope creep um, and because the project would be this, but they, they drift off with all these other questions that, that we could help them with and we wanted to help them, but they weren't paying for it because they were in that little project. So now the retainer 
uh, model just allows us to go wherever wherever we can help them and whatever the that makes sense. Yeah. 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 So and so you charge uh, like a monthly fee or something uh, based for so many hours is kind of the plan. Uh, based on how much we can help them is really how how we structure yeah. it. Um, and you know, just while we're on it, if people do want to maybe reach out to you, make sure that we give your the, the you know how you would uh, consult with them. Uh, yeah, so if you go to burnsconsulting.com, you can set up a free consultation as part of the FPA Coaches Corner. So um, my last name is spelled B-Y-R-N-E-S. So Burns Consulting is B-Y-R-N-E-S consulting.com. Um, so I want to go back to the notion of growth. And I jumped into all these um, issues of, you know, social media, video, and, you know, kind of went down that track. But um, if if not knowing anything about, you know, whoever our listener happens to be, but, you know, just speak to, um, you know, stepping back a little bit about, you know, growth. How do, what should we be, what should we be thinking about? What should we be talking about as we kind of come toward year end and look toward next year? Um, I've heard you talk about, you know, plan, you know, we're, we're a bunch of planners uh, in this audience. Um, and that, I know that's something that's really relevant to the way you think about, uh, thinking about growth, you got to sort of set things out in some kind of plan. How do we begin that process? Yeah, and and uh, I, I'm a big, big fan of planning, and and unfortunately, a lot of people just kind of fly by the seat of their pants. Um, but I, if you do, let's say you have a big number that you're trying to accomplish, assets under management, or number of clients, or um, if you're charging a financial planning fee, what's that total number going to be? Um, I think of it as like the trunk of the tree, and then how do you break out the roots to get to deliver those results? So you've heard me talk about the fist of growth, which is, you know, uh, client referrals, strategic alliances, all uh, um, bit, you know, organic growth that doesn't have a lead source. So that's marketing and sales. Um, and then the, the pinky nail is uh, M&A. So if you're going to do some inorganic growth and then the, the, the thumb knuckles just to slash a whole bunch of things, whether you're getting leads from a custodian or uh, in a referral sharing program or whether you're um, becoming more operationally efficient or more profitable, whatever it might be. So. I like to actually take that business goal and then break it down by those buckets or something similar to that. And let's say if you have client referrals, then you just don't just hope you get 10 client referrals if that's what you're allocating in your business plan. Like, how are you actually going to do it? Is it going to be events? Is it going to be webinars? Is it going to be um, uh, videos that you share with them? And then actually put an accountable, like a, you want to track the return on investment of all those activities and make sure that they're actually delivering the results. So you, you continue to get down and down. And if you have multiple pe people on your team, they should all have specific goals in all those little different sections. And then you should create uh, a growth calendar. Um, so I, I put it out in Excel, um, do it in the budget season. So here's what we think we're going to spend. Then tra obviously track the actual on there, but then actually track that you actually do it. Because a lot of people will say, hey, we're going to do yeah, tw twice as many videos, but then I track the accountability. Did you actually do that? Yeah, put some kind of calendar to it all, huh? Yeah. yeah. And so then um, that's where some people stop short is that, you know, the activity and the costs and the actual costs, but actually do the ROI, like track back what actually delivered the results. And you'll be that much smarter the next year. Um, you know, if you send out a holiday card, it's going to be cost X amount of hours. You're probably going to be realistic and say, that's probably not going to bring a new lead in. It'll contribute right. to the appreciation your clients have. But there are certain things that you spend money on, like events, for example, should be really specific of saying, hey, the, you know, I'm going to spend X and I hope to get Y uh, and then track, track that you get it. Um, so okay. that's business planning 101 or, uh, or, or in a nutshell, I should say. But a lot of folks don't have that growth calendar. And, um, and that can be broken down by target market or it could be broken down by planner within the team and they should have their own specific plan. Um, one last little nugget I'll say is, so if you say if you have 10... 10 leads from clients of which you're going to convert five of them. Say you have a 50% conversion rate and you track all that. You should actually have a strategy for, you should do a dump of all your clients, know who your advocates are, who gave you a lead the last three to five years. And you should actually have a strategy for the advocates and for the other people that's actually specific to those people and, and try to figure out how you would get leads from them and what your techniques are and what your strategies are, because you can actually track it down to that level and build out customized things. Um, so uh, 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 in a nutshell- Your point is that uh, someone who gives a lead is more likely to do it again? 
that, yeah, kind of yeah. Let's, let's say, uh, for example, the statistics show women get more referrals. Um, widows are great because they, they really need the help. They, f- they feel like they've lost their significant other and they talk to other widows. So you should have a specific strategy that's built in for that person. If that's like one of your number one advocates, how can you, you know, maximize that relationship to even maybe get more referrals, at least get the same amount. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, a lot of people don't get into the weeds. So as you do the, the roots and you keep going, the more you can come up with specific goals um, from a planning standpoint, there's a thing called smart goals. And we, for instance, something try to be cool and come up with one less ladder. So we call it the best goals, but uh, it's business driven, effective, specific, and timely. And the specific and timely part are really, really important. If you can get into the, the granular part, you're going to be that much more successful in your, in your business planning. Very good. Um, all right, so uh, start with the grand plan and then work through those different knuckles as you referred to it, um, as uh, uh, trying to think through the different aspects. And, and essentially uh, each one of those areas has its own maybe planning that goes with it in terms of campaigns or however it might you know, break out. Is that fair to say? Yeah, 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 exactly. And I can give you more specifics like case studies if you want, but but yes. Each one, each thing should get pretty granular and specific. Yeah, I, I yeah. did some and, examples. And you can pivot, like, you know, you're, you're, it's a plan. It's not set in stone, but if you have a really good plan, you should know if I execute on this, there's like 80% likelihood I'm going to get my results. Like, you should feel really confident, if not 100% confident, that's going to deliver the results. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then uh, just one, one thing I want to ask you about, too, is like, is there anything that... Um, uh, that's old, that's new, you, you know what I mean? Like, um, are there things that, you know, we might, uh, we get excited about the latest thing. We spend all this time talking about social media and video and, and that kind of stuff. And and there's reasons for that. It's, it, it is sort of uh, drawing attention and it's part of what can lead to new business. But uh, are there things that we might, you know, I think sometimes we forget about things that work. And uh, so that's where I was going to go with that. Is there anything that, you know, we just know has worked in the past, so don't forget about it. Yeah. Um, one that's kind of old school and one is kind of new school of marketing. Um, one is target markets. You know, really should know your target markets. And I call it the pandemic pivot. Um, and that is, and not to make light of, of, again, of this bad situation we're in, but there are any type of, of uh, crisis, there's opportunity. You've heard the saying like that before. So sure. what is creating a need for financial planning, for example, because of the pandemic, um, people are losing their jobs and some really wealthy people have lost their jobs. Uh, probably all of us know one contact that's lost their job. So now if you say, hey, I hate, you say this to all your clients, hey, I hate that people are struggling because of this pandemic. If you know anyone that's lost their job, I'd, I'd be glad to give them a free consultation to help you help them. Um, boom, you just created a whole great <laughs> referral strategy because you maybe pivoted off your normal target market, but thought of an opportunity of, of a, a need for advice. That's kind of the old school mentality. You're just thinking about your target markets and opportunities. Um, the newer one, which we probably have talked about before is personalized video emails. I used to talk about them and that it's a one-way video that is trackable. So you can know if they open it or cl- and click and watch the video. How um, is it trackable? Uh, the, I, I, if you go to Burns, the program that you use, the particular Burns program, Burns.com backslash email will tell you about the program that we went and found, we found a vendor that does that, but I it's not you. like Microsoft Outlook that says, Hey, such and such wants a read report, which is kind of intrusive. This is the, the people that receive it. Don't know that that happened. So they're get, you know, you're kind of getting this, you know, more like a, for lack of a better phrase, like, like a constant contact would give you uh, an insight yeah. as to who opened the email, that kind of thing. Yes. And actually, we'll tell you if you, you can uncheck it if it's annoying, but if you check it, it will actually tell you when they watch it. So they might, there's times where people will watch it like 10 times. I've had that happen uh-huh. before. Um, and you, there's a couple of reasons for that. We could talk about it. But but uh, but I, I was saying before the pandemic that this was really cool to add to your tiered service model. So it's you're already meeting in person and you're already sending out the email blasts, the regular ones, and you're maybe doing some like events or whatever. This is just one other thing to add to make your client service delivery off the charts. And they're they're like a real cool wow factor because most people still aren't receiving them. Uh, Unless a young kid kid using like Snapchat, which is, it's exploding. So there's a trend that's happening. People want this type of stuff, but all the people want it for a business reason. Uh, And we, we, it's just undiscovered. 
Um, so uh, last thing I would just, I, would, I could talk about it more, but one of the things I will tell you is that now more than ever, people are struggling to see people in front of each other. So this personalized video email is wonderful because someone that really wants to have a relationship with you in person, um, they can't always do a Zoom or video chat. Um, so they, they get these videos and it feels like they're like sitting across from me. They can't talk to you because it's a one-way video, but, but it, it's a really cool tool. So this is uh, of interest to me. It's something I've given thought to, but have um, been hesitant to pull the trigger on. Um, one of the things I've been just kind of having heightened awareness is that you know, we have a lot of, a lot of clients, um, you know, some over 300 or so between myself and another advisor. Um, and so it's like, okay, we want to reach out to these clients more um, routinely. And there's the range of clients, right? Of course, we've got some that are more uh, financially lucrative and others that are, you know, less so. Um, and so there's a limit to how much time I have, right? For yeah. meetings and doing all the things we do. And and so, uh, you know, I, th I think in the past, I've had the impression that these uh, video emails are supposed to be somewhat customized, somewhat tailored to, hey, uh, you know, the example in some of the, the company I looked at was, uh, here's your quarterly uh, news, here's your quarterly update, and here's what's happening in your accounts, and, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, it's you know, very specific to the client and what went well and what didn't and so forth. And it, I can envision that taking a lot of time to do uh, each one. And if I'm going to spend that amount of time, maybe I'd be better just to do it on the phone or with a video conference, you know, that kind of thing. Um, or does it become more generic, you know, more, hey, this is what's happening in the market. Just wanted to give you an update, you know, and it's not as specific to or whatever the topic might be, you follow my point. Not, not, maybe market isn't the best one, but you follow my point. Um, and uh, so I talked to that notion of like, what, do, what are your thoughts about how, how tailored, how customized should that be? And uh, if I'm gonna take time to be spending the preparation for some level of customization that is really client specific, uh, is it better to do the video email or, or just to actually reach out? So uh, let's do the whole spectrum. So there's the YouTube yeah. video that can be blasted out to everybody. And, you know, maybe there's something about, hey, here's what our thoughts are on the 2021 economy and what the new administration is going to do. That's generic yeah. that goes to everybody. The more specific might be, hey, so, um, Bob and Cindy Smith. Um, here's some implications that are going to happen to wealthy people based on the new administration and what they're proposing. We might want to take some, takes, you know, either take some taxes at now or later or whatever you, you you're the expert there. Yeah. Um, let's, let's have a, let's set up a call. Um, I want to let you know, let you know, I'm thinking about it now that's customized to that person, but you might do 25 of them and they all take um, 30 seconds because you get really good at it. Or maybe they're two minutes long. And you, and at the end you say, Hey, I, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving or, uh, you know, what are you yeah. guys doing? For a little bit of personal and, you, and a lot of that's routine. Yeah. Are your kids in school? What are they doing? All that. And, and all of a sudden that video is for them, even though the main chunk of the message might be replicated in, in a, a third or all the client base. So that's one thing. And then the, obviously then the other part of the scale is the two way conversation where you get them on a phone call or a video chat. And I would say that, that nobody in this, very few people are doing that in the middle um, where you do that one-way communication. They're using email or they're leaving voicemails. And that isn't as powerful as, as seeing that video and, and letting people's personality come across. Yeah. Um, and I, just, I do think that, um, that even if it's um, a flavor of customization, you know, like in the case that you gave where there's sort of a consistent message you're sending to a, a chunk of clients, even you know, whether it's all or, or some, um, but then throwing in, I hope you and the kids are well, you know, and you're talking about, you know, did they go off to college or are they, you know, working from home for the school year or whatever. Um, that and creates I, that personal, like, hey, I, I'm thinking of you kind of connection that's a little bit more connected in a sense. And you can do it through your, your laptop or whatever you're using to record, or you can use it in your phone. So you actually be in the moment and say, hey, well, you know, look at this great sunset on the water. I know you have a boat. Um, and I was just thinking you would love this. So, and, and it's like something just pure relationship wise that's just for yeah. them or, 
or uh, hey, I'm at the you know this little league game for my grandson, and I was thinking about you because you have a kid that plays baseball too, and blah 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 blah. Like make those connections. But it actually really works for prospects too. It doesn't necessarily work. It works with prospects that you don't know, but but it's still a little creepy to get a video from somebody you don't know. It really works <laughs> um, those people that you get in the pipeline, and um, and you know what the. the they might not be getting proactive communications from their existing advisor. So when you have a change like this election just happened is a great one to say, hey, this is what we're thinking might in uh, impact investments. or this is what you should probably be doing from a financial planning perspective. And, and there's some urgency. We need to take action and do this before the end of the year with our clients. Is your advisor doing this for you? And now, you you know, the hard part about winning prospects over is getting in front of them. Um, and so you can't do that all the time. And uh, the video allows you to basically be sitting across them. They're like seeing you. They, fe they yeah. feel like they're seeing you. So that's where it can actually help with conversion to get them to the conversion faster. On the topic of the um, potential tax changes and things like that, you, had, um, you and I had talked a couple of weeks ago when we were said, oh, we should do this. Um, it, it was catching up. Uh, you kind of mentioned the idea that that's probably a topic that advisors should be doing before the end of the year for their clientele, just a, uh, or even for marketing purposes. But the idea of a here's the implications for tax expectations, and here's what we're paying attention to this, and this might, how it might impact clientele. I think that's a really great point. I'd love for you just to elaborate on that. So whether you're a Democrat or Republican, I'll, I'll, I will say, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, you might not like the outcome or you do like the outcome of the election. This doesn't matter. What you have to love is that they, um, they, they came out and highlighted, Biden highlighted people that were wealthy and said, this is going to change for you. And so, you know, they, they were saying everyone that makes 400,000 more or, or, or um, blah, 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 yep. blah. And so whether you like the changes or Capital not, gains it matter. rates or other types of tax consequences, you higher income tax. They they basically segmented what really pr probably aligns with financial planners target markets. They want wealthy people in most cases. So now they actually have a need from financial planners like boom, whether you like it or not, jump on the trend and, and take advantage of it and over not over communicate, but be proactive. Yeah, yeah. On it. Um it's on it's it. it's <laughs> You know, the election sometimes is a gift. Like you, it's probably made all of our hair fall out. You know, we always joke about that. You, we're both hair challenged, but but like there was a lot of stress around an election like this. But there's some good that can come out of it too. You can win new clients because of the election. Yeah, I mean, I think you, no matter what your uh, leanings, you got to look at the opportunities for how you can speak to clients' concerns and uh, or prospective clients' concerns. And this is one of those. I mean, who isn't? talking about the election these days and not that you want to wade into the political dynamics, but you do want to speak to the potential financial planning uh, implications. And that, that's all that is. And, yeah. and a lot of that is still unknown, you know, in terms of how, like, I guess, depending on how the Senate turns out and how, right. how things will really be implemented, but it, it's a, it's an opportunity to get in front of people. Yeah, and, and and no matter how it turns out, it's 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 a topic of conversation. So we talked about people that lost their jobs. That's um, an issue with the pandemic. Uh, we talked about um, uh, election wealthy people, how they're impacted. That's a target market in some ways. Um, you think of other ones that are, are because of this pandemic that that need your help. Um, you know, obviously anyone that's lost a significant other, a lot of people have have died, which is unfortunate. But even the 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 thought of us potentially dying from a pandemic or something like this makes them a little bit more um, motivated to have an estate plan and to talk with a financial planner to get that ball rolling, even if they outsource that estate planning work, they're usually involved to some degree. So that could be something that motivates people. Small businesses, you know, you don't have to be an expert on, there, there's gonna be another package from the government that comes out and, and you don't have to know, you'd be able to read the thousand page document you need to have a strategic alliance that does that, right? Like a CPA or a banker or, uh, you know, whoever is giving the loan, mortgage broker, whatever it might be, like they're the experts and get them on a Zoom like this, like credit to Chris for doing this, um, you know, get that expertise because you organize it, there's a transference of expertise. Like it, people think you are an expert because you're asking the question. So um, again, 
take take the crisis and think of where you can get the opportunity and and, and turn something that's really bad into something potentially good for your business. Um, one of the things that uh, we've talked about in the past have been um, techniques people use to try to get uh, in front of people through being quoted in articles or writing articles and so forth. Um, you mentioned earlier the notion of an ebook. Um, to, to, uh, do you have strong thoughts about how, you know, whether it's writing um, or something that significant or something shorter? How, how important is that in one's uh, marketing planning? So um, I've been published 400 times and it's helped my business in a big way. And not necessarily that the phone rings off the hook when the article gets published in Barron's, which is the, the new one I'm writing right now. Um, it's more the, you know, once you get them in the pipeline, they feel like you're a vetted expert. You know, the articles can be terrible. They don't have to read all 400 of our articles, but they, they like, wow, like that, that carries some weight. It differentiates the person that doesn't, hasn't written anything and hasn't made it through the cut to get into the press. And, and, you know, it's not that hard. You just have to know the audience that your media outlet that you're pitching is, is trying to deliver to and say, hey, I have something that could really help and, and speak their language because they all need content. They're like, we're talking about how we need to uh, ramp up our marketing efforts for financial planners, but they also need to ramp up their, their publishing. Um, and they've been doing that for years. And so they might seem like they don't want to talk to you because they're too busy, but they once you crack that um, challenge, then they'll come to you all the time if you're a really good resource. Um, so I, I could talk about PR for hours. Is there a specific question that you have, or I don't want to babble? No, on I those. just, I just, uh, I thought it was worth just touching on real briefly that that that's part of that picture too. You know that uh, we we tend to focus on you know things we do for cost, and there's other opportunities, but that can put you in a position of expertise, um, and it's maybe a cost of time. Uh, and and some research and whatever goes with that, but something that may, may be worthwhile from time to time for people to keep in mind. And I've, I've spoken for the FPA in Massachusetts many times over the years. Thank you for the, the partnership. And I know you used to have a leadership role and still are very involved. Um, I used to start it with a media training. I think that was the first time I ever um, spoke. Right. And uh, one of the things I will say is if you create an article for your website, which you should, because you need search engine optimization and write keywords and all that kind of stuff and fresh content and all that, but if you share that versus the same article that's published somewhere, um, the, it's going to just give you more credibility and probably get more clicks and opens and more readership and all that. So you should have a mix of, of uh, getting media exposure. And you said, like you said, it's free, um, but there is an effort that goes into it, you know, whether your staff costs or whatever it would be to, to get that piece published, um, time and effort. Um, but but it is relatively cheap. You know, and so... Um, I, I would say it's not the end all be all, but it should be part of your marketing mix that that builds up your uh, your credibility so you can convert more clients, new clients. Well, I'm sure we could dig in deep on a whole bunch of the things we've talked about. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to hit on before we wrap up, but I guess I, I, my my message really in in having you on and encouraging our our listeners is to think you know uh, this year has been such an odd year. And I'm, I'm sure for a lot of people, it's disrupted their uh, ability to grow their business uh, because of the you know, changing dynamics and, and lack of uh, personal contact, right? And so as we uh, kind of come to the winding down of 2020, uh, I know I'm thinking about ramping up for 2021. And uh, like you said, pivot, how do I do that where I can you know, uh, be intentional with the restrictions we might have to deal with at least for maybe the first half of the year and, and still run into the year with a good game plan and ways that we can still try to grow as a business. And so that's what I was hoping you'd come on to talk about. I think we've hit on a lot of different ideas. Uh, anything else you wanted to remind people about, Mike? Yeah, I mean, um, I would say do a SWOT analysis. So every every time there's some kind of crisis, do an immediate business plan. It doesn't always have to be on a yearly cycle. And so when this happened in March, you probably should have been doing that. Uh, but now look at it again. We maybe see the light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe we don't. Um, so what are we going to do in the first half of the year? And what does the second half of the year look like? 
So do a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And opportunities and threats is really kind of the pandemic. Uh, the pandemic plays a role in that. And sure. So how do you pivot or how do you backtrack? You know, there's there's things you go take advantage of, and there's other things you step back on. Um, so you you know, I'm a, obviously I'm biased, and I facilitate offsite planning types of things, which would now be through a Zoom. But but get get away from your day to day job and think. You know, like yeah, my dad works for IBM. He used to work for IBM for 30 years, and he had this little thing that said think and I used to keep it on my desk because it I just need a reminder so I'll just stop getting into this like we're we're like set in our ways and we don't yeah we're always on the thing. hamster wheel or whatever and yeah, you need sometimes exactly. to step back and get perspective. And one of those nugget nuggets that you come up with in that offsite thing could really make a big difference in the success next year. So hopefully that little nugget is a good one to end on. Excellent. Um Remind everyone again, Mike, if they should uh, need help in the process, uh, how do they reach you again? Sure. You know, part of the FPA Coaches Corner, we offered a free consultation for FPA members. You can find us on their website if you can find it there. But, um, you know, it's probably even better to go to burnsconsulting.com. Um, you can see all our free content for, you know, 400 articles. And uh, we can also uh, just set it up through our contact us page. So go to uh, Burns Consulting, B-Y-R-N-E-S consulting.com. Awesome. Thanks for being with me today. Hey, I love doing this anytime. Thanks, Chris.